Hello. Today, I have a book for you about matter. It's called, Do You Really Want to Skate on Thin Ice? A book about states of matter. It is written by Daniel Maurer and illustrated by Teresa Alberini. Thanks to Amicus Publishing for allowing this read aloud. Everything around you is made of matter. The pond by your friend's house, the trees, and your ice skates are made of matter. You and your friend are made of matter. Even the air you breathe is matter. You will find matter in different states. In summer, the pond is a liquid, but in the cold winter, water freezes into a solid. Then you can go ice skating. Though around here, it doesn't really get cold enough to safely go on any pond or water that you see frozen. Water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, zero degrees Celsius. It turns into solid ice, but if it warms up a little, the ice will start melting back into a liquid. Do you really want to skate on thin ice? Oh no, when the ice cracks, you fall into the liquid water below. Luckily, the water isn't too deep. Deep, cold water is dangerous. Looks like the girl and the boy are a little scared. Why is there water below the pond or below the ice? The pond only freezes on the surface and ice floats on the water. So it looks like her friend fell in. You'd better go dry off and quickly before your clothes freeze in the cold air. Air is a mixture of gases, which are another state of matter. Gases are invisible. So luckily her friend is helping her get out of the pond. When your clothes dry, where does the water go? The heat in the house warms up the water enough that the water turns into a gas or evaporates. Usually you can't see evaporation, but you know it's happening because your clothes will get dry. So there they are hanging up their clothes so they can dry off. The water will evaporate. Some hot cocoa will help you warm up too. Boiling is another way to change a liquid to a gas. Water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. Mm, I love hot cocoa. Looks like they have a cinnamon stick in there, so they have like cinnamon hot cocoa. I really like marshmallows in my hot cocoa, though. As the steam escapes from the kettle, it is water as a gas or water vapor. When the water vapor first boils out of the kettle, you can't see it. So I have a kettle just like this, and you can't see the water. And then all of a sudden you see all this steam coming out and you know that the water is boiling. When the vapor cools a bit in the air, it condenses into tiny water droplets. These tiny droplets make up the cloud you see above your boiling tea kettle. You can also see condensation inside your cocoa mug. So around the rim there, she has little water droplets or maybe little cocoa droplets. What about something to eat? How about popcorn? Popcorn uses a change in the state of matter to make it pop. There is water inside each kernel of popcorn. As the popcorn is heated, the water turns into steam. The steam expands and the kernel explodes. How about melting butter for the popcorn? Butter has different states too. Butter can be solid or it can be liquid if you heat it. Ah, so it looks like she's melting the butter in the pan and then they're gonna pour all that yummy butter over that popcorn. I love butter on my popcorn and toast. There they are eating the yummy popcorn. You really don't want to skate on thin ice, but now you know how states of matter change. Some even taste good, like popcorn. So it says, try this melted chocolate fun. So if you get your parents, maybe they can help you do this experiment. It says some solids can change into liquids. They melt when they are heated. 
Try making these yummy treats to see how chocolate changes states. So it says you need a solid chocolate bar, you need a microwave safe bowl, you need hot pads, you need graham crackers, and you need a tray with waxed paper. So it says break the chocolate bar into pieces and put them in the bowl. With the help of an adult, remember your parents, melt the chocolate in the microwave. Start with one minute, add more time if needed. Now that it's melted, it's not a solid anymore. What is it? It's a liquid. So then you use the hot pads or, or parents to remove the bowl because the bowl and the chocolate are going to be really hot. You can then dip your graham crackers into the liquid chocolate, then put the graham crackers on a tray and let the chocolate cool. And it won't be a liquid anymore. It'll now be a solid again. And then you can uh, talk about with your while you're waiting for the chocolate to become a solid again before you can eat it. You can talk about what are the differences between the liquid chocolate and the solid chocolate. I know one thing that's not different. One thing that's the same is that they're both delicious. You can also make juice pops. And if you get an uh, ice cube tray, some popsicle sticks, some foil, some fruit juice, and a stopwatch. So it says you can pour some juice into an ice cube, ice cube tray. You can cover it with aluminum foil and put one popsicle stick through the foil, put it in the freezer for at least two hours, and then you can take the foil off and you'll have a, your own popsicle. And you can see when you put it in your mouth, the heat will melt the popsicle from a solid to a liquid. You can use a stopwatch and measure how long it takes to melt. So then you can try putting maybe a popsicle on uh, like in a bowl and does it melt faster or slower than the one you ate? So it's kind of interesting. It looks like they made orange ones. I would probably make an orange one. I love orange Ooh, or apple. So at the end of the book here, it has a glossary, which has some different words that we read. And it also has some books you could read to learn more about matter. And it has some websites that you uh, could have your parents help you find, uh, including PBS Kids and ABC Ya. And that's the end of our book today. But I hope you enjoyed learning about matter and maybe you can do some experiments at your home.